Rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so way back when, when we were talking about energy, I said that rotational kinetic energy is important, and someday we're going to go back and we're going to talk about it. Well, guess what? Someday is finally here, and we get to talk about it. Yay! So, uh, rotational kinetic energy. So, this is based on our angular velocity and our rotational inertia. So we've already talked about our W or our omega here being our angular velocity. Now we can talk about our rotational inertia, which is this I right here. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. It's very, very important that an I for a rotational inertia. Uh-huh. Okay, so just to recap, inertia is an object's resistant change motion. So if it's moving, it stays moving. If it's not moving, it stays not moving. Rotational inertia is very similar, only it's dealing with things that are rotating. So if it's rotating, it stays rotating. If it is not rotating, mm, it's going to take a little bit to get it to rotate. Right? This resists our change in angular motion. So the bigger our I is, the bigger our rotational inertia is, the more energy it takes to get something to roll, which means that overall uh, the velocity will be less because more of that energy is going to make it roll than making it to move forward. And this is dependent on the mass of the object, the size and shape of the object, and its axis of rotation. All right, so I'm going to kind of do a little things out of order here. But let's look at this. So let's do a quick review on this. This is a box on a ramp. So going back to our energy style, right? Uh, our potential energy here at the top should equal our total energy, and that total energy or potential energy should equal our kinetic energy here at the bottom, right? So if it's three meters tall, we can figure out how fast it's moving. So we have mass times gravity times height equals one-half mv squared. Now since it's a box, and there's only one box, and the box has the same mass, and the box's mass is not going to change from there to there, we can go ahead and cancel out these m's, because it's the same. So gravity times our height equals one-half v squared. So we get 29.4, 3 times 9.8. And that equals one half v squared. So our v should equal seven point six seven meters per second, right? As it goes down, that's a conservation of energy problem. All right. So now let's look at this other style. Where we're actually rolling. So what we have here is a solid disk. So when something is rolling. We're looking at this stuff over here, right? Now you might notice on these objects, this is how we find I, right? This is on the back of your equation sheet, and it's listed in your notes, and you probably saw it a million times, and you're like, oh, that's cool. But this gives us our I. So each one of these formulas tells us what I is equal to. So I, for a cylinder or disk, is equal to one-half, the mass times the radius squared. I for a cylinder hoop is equal to 1 times the mass times the radius squared. I for a solid sphere is going to be 2 fifths the ma mass times the radius squared. For a shell, we're going to look at 2 thirds the mass times the radius squared. And you should hopefully notice that this coefficient is the only thing that's changing. So, if we treat that as a variable, we can solve for these a little bit easier, especially when it's rolling. Matter of fact, only when it's rolling. When it's not rolling, we have to look at things that are spinning and rotating, and that's a little bit different. But if it's rolling, it's a little bit easier. So we can just call this 
variable b. Okay. So let's get into stuff, some stuff about b. I need some room to work on this. All right. So if i equals b, whatever that fraction is, m r squared, right? Mass times radius squared, and rotational kinetic energy equals one half i angular velocity squared. Then rotational kinetic energy also equals one half b m r squared w squared, right? Hopefully, yes, you can see that. I just plugged in our I formula for I. Now, what about our angular velocity? So our angular velocity should equal our linear velocity if we times it by the radius. So our angular velocity equals our linear velocity divided by our radius. So let's plug that in for W. So RKE equals one half B M R squared plus B over R squared. All right, let's go a little bit further now. Rotational kinetic energy equals one half. M R squared plus V squared over R squared. Take a look at R's. Those should cancel out. And this isn't a plus. This is a, sorry, got a little crazy there. That should be multiply. <laughs> it was a heading. It wouldn't cancel out this all. Um, anyways, so those should cancel out. So that means our rotational kinetic energy equals one half B M B squared. And that's going to make these problems a whole lot easier. But this only works if it is rolling. If it's not rolling, you can't use this formula. Right, you have to actually know what the radius is, what the mass is. Um, but for this, whenever it's rolling, we can just plug in this one half b m v squared, and that's going to make it very. Well, I'm not going to say very easy. It's going to make it easier to add in our kinetic energy. So that way, we can add like variables. One half m v squared adds a lot easier to one half b m v squared than it does when it's an angular. Okay, so. Now we got that fun formula. Let's go back over here. So we have a solid disk, and it's going to roll down a ramp that is three meters tall. How fast will it go? Well, that three meters is the same as before, so that means our potential energy should equal our total energy, and that should equal the mass times the gravity times the height. All right, now it's going to roll down to the bottom. So, at the bottom, that mass times gravity times height will equal our kinetic energy, like before, plus our rotational kinetic energy. Right? So that means mgh equals one half mv squared plus one half b mv squared. Okay? Because that's the formula we just got. Masses should cancel out because it's the same object, right? It's the circle, it's the ball that's rolling down the hill, down the incline, down the ramp, whatever. It's the same thing. If it was like a car, then the car isn't rolling, just the wheels are, and then the masses wouldn't cancel out because they're different objects. But right here, our kinetic energy has the same mass as the object that's rolling, so all these masses should cancel out. So, gravity times height. 
Um, we have 29.4 equals 1 half v squared plus 1 half. We need to figure out what i variable, the coefficient is. And this is a solid disk, so that is 1 half. And we got that from our fun sheet over here, so solid disk. Coefficient is 1 half. squared. All right. So now we got 29.4 equals 0.5 v squared plus 0.25 v squared. Now we can add these together. 29.4 v squared. Divide each side by 0.75. Square root square root, and our velocity should be 6.26 meters per second. Notice that this velocity is smaller than this velocity over here, right? Because some of this potential energy goes to making it roll, right? So it has a moment of inertia, it has this resistance to rolling, so ooh, some of that energy has to go to make it roll, so it's not going to go as fast. Um, for the next example, we have another object. Uh, this object is a hoop, and because the hoop has a moment of inertia that is larger, more of that energy is going to go to making it roll. So it should be going down the hill slower at the bottom than it did at the top, and we can check that. So let's see here. Um, we have 29.4 at the top, right, it's the same 3 meter ramp, that should equal 1 half v squared, masses still cancel out, plus 1 half of b, and the b for this object is 1, v squared. So we end up with 29.4 equals v squared, right, a half plus a half, square root of that, square root of that, velocity, should equal 5.42 meters per second. Okay, so it's slower. More of the energy that we had at the beginning is going to make this object roll. All right, let's deal with one more uh, real fast. I realize it's going a little long, and I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to get through all of the examples. All right, so this is a meter stick. You can tell because it looks like a meter stick. And it's not rolling. In fact, it's going to fall. And it's going to fall around its center of gravity, which should be right around here, which is at the 0.5 meter mark. That means all of its gravitational potential energy is going to be from this height. So 9.8 times 0.5. All right. Now, as far as its rotating length, it's going to rotate around this point, right? The whole thing is going to rotate from here. And the whole thing is going to go down. So, right, that's going to make our rotation. But this is our center of gravity. Just like with our high jump lab, we're measuring from our center. All right, so in this case, our potential energy should equal our rotational kinetic energy. Because right? the whole thing is rotating, the whole thing is to make it rotate. So, We have mass times gravity times height equals one half our moment of inertia squared m times g times h equals one half. And since it's a stick rotating around one end, that'll give us one third m r squared. Like the uh, previous two examples, it's the same object, so this mass should cancel out. And we're left with 0.5 times 9.8 should equal half of one-third, so that is one-sixth times our radius. 
And the radius for here for a meter stick would be 1 squared. Times. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. All right, so we have 4.9. I'm going to change colors here so it doesn't get confusing. 4.9. I was supposed to change colors. That's not blue at all. That was weird. Um, and that should equal 1 6 W squared. So 29.4 equals our angular velocity squared. So our angular velocity should equal 5.42 radians per second. All right. That is uh, 8.3. Have a good day. I will see you later. Goodbye.